once again, thanks to the client's permission, we are able to share our yesterday Vedic astrology consultation. So when I've entered the bird data, the bird time and the bird place, I'm looking at the degree of the ascendant. Oh no, the worst, it's zero. So the D1, D9, D10, Rashi, Navam, Shanta, Shamsa, we need to rectify these charts. So we have work to do. If that would be Scorpio, we have Moon and Jupiter in the 12th house. Very nice for spirituality. Also, the Scorpio is quite spiritual ascendant because the Keto is the natural lord. There is this desire for freedom, which can extend towards those uh, spiritual aspiration. And also we have the fifth lord in the 12th Jupiter. This is the common astrologer's yoga and the person is into astrology. So the Scorpio uh, seems as a good option. Now Ketu and Venus in the 10th house. This is also very important for the spiritual type of work, especially in the sign of Leo. Again, Sun, so Sun, the Sattvic planets, they will always support this. The Sun can also give that a blend towards the health, things like that. The person is also the teacher of the yoga. We have Lagna Lord Mars in the ninth house for very independent outlook on life. So everything seems working fine. And we also know that the person is assisting in the work of the spouse. The spouse is the singer, quite popular in the entertainment and uh, assisting in the work as an accountant, as a person who is doing all that paperwork. That is the 10th Lord Sun in the eighth house house and this eight house will also support not so much conventional type of work work which is uh, often spiritual because there is no much rajas involved and if we use the marriage time the first marriage was in sun mercury for that scorpio rashi dinavamsha would be in pisces so we have mercury beautifully seventh lord so sun mercury mercury is the seventh lord first marriage is seventh house in the chart of marriage navamsha so everything seems fine. We must remember that when we are analyzing the rules which are related to the specific placement from the planets or the Karakas, as we call this in this context, for example, fourth from Sun or 10th house from the Moon, then the planets and the signs there will be the same because until the ascendant is changing, the planets will stay in the same signs. Therefore, the 10th house from the Moon will have the same planets, will have the same sign. But these planets there and the lord of these houses, they will be in different houses. For example, fourth from Sun is Mercury. So for Scorpio, it will be in the ninth house and for Sagittarius, it would be in the eighth house. So based on that, we can also use the houses from Karaka and see where they are placed, in which houses they are placed. This will often show us how the thing is starting because the Lord, especially the house, is showing what you have to activate to start that specific thing in life. Why is the Karaka, the Yoga, like here we have the Mercury and Mars, will show the objective description of what is going on. So here the Mercury and Mars will show also the Yoga. Similarly, 10th house from the Moon is Mercury and Mars. So as employment, we have Mercury, which is person who is doing with economy, accounting, things like that. So this will also favor all of these things related to helping the spouse with the finances because Mercury is there. And for working with the spouse, we need some connection between the second from the moon and the 12 from the moon. So it's Mercury and Mars. They are together, so it's fine. The person moved to New York in Mars. Rahu Mars is the malefic lord of first. Rahu is the malefic planet in the fourth. So if malefics are in the first or fourth, they are usually showing that the move into the foreign land, which is usually the 12th house, is inspired. There is some negative inspiration. A person may be not super satisfied or there is some lack in being in the place of birth and the person, this may be a vote for going abroad if other uh, things in the chart are supporting. Here we see that the uh, Mercury and Mars, which is the main we could say the wealth instigator in the chart here uh, is immovable and in the ninth house. So this will also push the person abroad. 
Let's see how the spouse is showing. So the second spouse is into the singing and her writing. The second house in the Navamsha, which is showing the second spouse, is Mars. And Mars is with Mercury. And that is in the fifth from the second spouse. So it shows that ability of writing. And person is also into the yoga, so that Mars and Mercury is there. We also see person has two children, one adopted, one biological. We have Moon, Nine Lord with Jupiter. So Moon with the Karaka is very, very nice. We know that for ladies, the ninth house is showing the children. For men, it's the fifth house. And the Jupiter is the general Karaka for children. So good relationship between the lords of this. And the Karaka is very favorable for uh, First of all, uh, independent life of the children, but also the being satisfied, having good relation. All of that package is uh, nicely there. We are analyzing the marriage. We have to take into account seven house for attitude, seven lord for interaction, and the Venus for general fruits of the marriage. The question is, which marriage will give the love, the direction and protection, and also the satisfaction? Because we have some karma for this, but which person will fulfill that? This is very strong value of Vedic Astrology that we can find those reference points and then we can see how much each of the marriage can bring to that, we could say, the matter or the threshold of the satisfaction, uh, which is uh, could be very hard to do without uh, those uh, tools which are given by this Vedic tradition of astrology. We can see that the second marriage here, the, uh, even in Rashi chart, we see that the second marriage is fulfilling very strong desires from past life related to some fulfillment, some uh, getting what the person wants. Uh, often uh, one has some strong direction, probably also have something like that, that until you get this, then uh, everything else is a little bit like uh, looking at the world through a glass. So it's important to understand where is that point of uh, openness, the fortune, and which person, it may not be marriage, it may be something else, but if it's marriage, then which partner uh, or which activity from specific partner can activate this point. So the first marriage was in the Sun, Mercury. Now the Sun and Mercury, they are related to the seventh house, but also very strongly related to the sixth house. Hmm. And also the singing, right? We have some challenge here to ascribing the singing to the second spouse. Also, when we are uh, looking at the career life, we have to see which uh, direction, so which planet. One planet can have umbrella of jobs, like Mercury, for example, is a very good example because Mercury can give so many uh, so many options can give, for example, someone who is writing or into economy. It can give also someone who is uh, even the physician or even the sportsman. So depending which other planets are affecting Mercury or which houses are engaged from the Navamsha, we know that this umbrella, this group of uh, jobs can give... Uh, wealth can give fulfillment and also a long-term focus which is very important for success uh, sometimes it can be only one planet then we know that oh you have to go there sometimes it could be three planets then we can use other reference points to choose that one which is better sometimes there are many options which can work simultaneously and uh, sometimes there is a zero planet so we have to choose something like there is no wealth but for example good uh, fulfillment you will be focused some people don't have the strong desire for wealth or status and things like that so then we can use the other things to choose what is best for the native also then we can open the dashamsa and see if the fulfillment is increased when person is having many clients there could be dasha which will bring many many clients many many people and even partners because the same house seven house but for example uh, this coming of these partners may curtail or hit the fulfillment so uh, for external for other people it may seem oh you have such a good time so many people are coming to you but uh, for that person who is living in that vehicle in that vahana in that body and experiencing all that what is happening it may curtail it may little bit diminish the overall happiness and fulfillment so we can also see which projects which plants are uh, giving what we can see that for Aries ascendant uh, uh, if we use the Scorpio Rashi 
Eris, Ascendant in the Sham, so we'll be there. We have a seventh house stronger, which is the preference for business, or at least uh, there is a favor of circumstances of this external stimuli. And we have Mercury and Moon in second house, which is very good for yoga as an also employment because it's sixth lord. We know that person was doing yoga uh, as a contract uh, project, but also was employed in some dual programs or things like that. But if we take the Pisces Navamsha, this Mercury and Mars, we earlier said that this is connected both to the part when the person is doing the economical assistance for the spouse, but also the yoga, it's uh, really not giving wealth here. We have also some point of apprehension here with that uh, Pisces Asana. And also very important thing, the health. We know that malefics, which are influencing sixth or eighth in the Rashi, will usually, we could say, trigger or attack the uh, nivriti point in the chart, which is related to the uh, some problems with the body. So some previous life bad karma, if related to our health, will show which weak points of the body will be the doors of disease. So this is usually the six and eight. It's interesting in the Prashna Marga, the South Indian classic of astrology, we have even some assignment of bad deeds from the past life related to that specific uh, challenges in our health. And uh, if we use the proper dasha and uh, we got the luck to get these goodies from our parampara, our tradition, we know that 8 and 12 in the Navamsha will usually get activated in that challenging time. And if they are good yoga's benefits and so on, then we can see that one can be protected or there will be some improvement in one's health. So uh, in Rashi, there may be many, many options, but with proper dasha and uh, properly rectified Navamsha and this knowledge about 8 and 12, uh, this will uh, help us so much and it will uh, remove so many uh, doubts and uh, will enable us to pinpoint which periods of time will give what kind of health circumstances. Uh, we had the Lyme disease in Ketu Saturn and Torn Hip Labrum in Ketu Mercury. We count from Ketu to Saturn, we will get the Sagittarius, it will count from Ketu to Mercury, we will get the Gemini. So Sagittarius and the Gemini, we need to remember uh, those signs. Also the Lyme disease is uh, moon related because it's blood, so either afflicted moon or the Ketu Venus. Brother also had this disease in past and he also has the Ketu Venus yoga in the chart. Now, what if we change? Now we see there is uh, some points which are really not clicking. In the last maybe three, four minutes, we were observing that there are some problems there. The marriage, Sun, Mercury affecting the sixth house very much. And uh, also there is no wealth related to that Mercury and Mars. The career life in the Dashamsa. We got something, but there are uh, many things we can feel. It's often quite of a feeling. Of course, it's not uh, just a uh, feeling without any base, but all of these factors, when they are put together in our mind, they are giving us some kind of general, we could say, judgment about some asanas. So here we have many points which are really not there. What if we will change to Sagittarius? Then the Sun, Mercury, Dasha. If we will count the Anubhava in the Navamsha, then from Sun to Mercury, the same distance, we will get exactly the seventh house. Now the second spouse is the second house. And also the lacking thing was that the person is mainly singer. Writing part was there, but no singing, right? No entertainment, the Venus. Here we have Moon exalted in the second house. And the Lord as Venus has Mutual Drishti with Saturn. Venus Saturn is very often coming in the entertainment industry. That is now very nice there. Now person was starting career in Moon Sun when was starting doing the yoga thing. If we change the Dashamsa to Sagittarius, the Sun is the ninth lord of contracts in the fourth house. So it's center based career like tattoo studio, like doing yoga, everything related to some kind of place. And Pisces and Sun, very spiritual influences there. A person started teaching the elementary school in Mars Rahu. Rahu is 10th Lord for Sagittarius Dashamsa. And very important thing, which was also lacking for the Eris Dashamsa, person ended that work in Mars Moon. So for Eris, Moon is not related to the 8th house, whilst for Sagittarius, Moon is the 8th Lord. So now, 
if we change Rashi to Sagittarius, it will change Navamsha to Aries and Sagittarius Dashamsa. Like now it's everything is clicking. So then you know that the rectification is right. Let's see the Rasi chart. The first marriage was again in Sun Mercury. Mercury is the 12th Lord Mars. So again, we have the connection. First marriage was also hidden because the person was very, very young. And we can see that this seven Lord is in Dushtana for Sagittarius. So the Dushtana, they are coming. Uh, why we take second, sixth, eighth, and twelfth? This is because they are the Chayagrahas. There is, these are houses when there is a shadow. And from this shadow, the Dushtana, the problems are coming. Now the second house is included because second house is the house of Vishnu. Also for Sagittarius Rashi, we see the beautiful Tapashvi Yoga, Saturn, Ketu, Venus. So for all people who are living minimalistic life for the internal development, doing yoga, astrology, things like that, very interested in increasing the internal happiness, the knowledge. Uh, these, uh, we could call it Brahmanic consciousness, will be often um, associated with uh, related yogas in the chart. One of them will be the Tapashvi Yoga. If you'd like to learn more about it, then please consider watching this video. Here. And remember, we were taking forth from Sun. It was Mercury in the Rashi. And now Mercury is not in ninth, but in the eight. This shows helping the spouse even more because eight house is the resources of others. It's second from seven. So if someone is working within others' projects, then the eight house will be very often uh, accentuated. This yoga is also giving the yoga. <laughs> yoga of plants is giving the yoga uh, exercises because the Mars is the main one, is there. And the Jyotish, because uh, Mars will be fifth and twelfth Lord. So for Sagittarius, the Mars is very important for Jyotish because it is giving that automatic connection. The person uh, learned that from foreigners being in foreign countries because this is an eighth house and in the Chararashi movable sign. So Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, they are Chararashis and they are supporting getting whatever these plants, good or bad, are giving in the foreign land. Therefore, we see what is the big stake of the properly rectified chart because there will be different timings, different remedies, different hints given. If we have badly rectified chart, then all of these three will be wrong. For example, you will have wrong 12th house in the Navamsha, so you will not be able to see which periods will give you good health, which periods will bring some challenges there. There will be mismatch between 6th and 7th in Navamsha. So for example, you can say, oh, in this period you will get married, but in fact it will be 6th house, so what will come, it will be the separation because of that uh, bad ascendant rectified Navamsha. And finally, the remedies, especially in the Rashi, if you have wrong ascendant, your uh, estimation, which planet is the cursed, because there will be only one, and uh, this is also based on the houses very much. So therefore you will have problem, you will have some blockage to find that one cursed planet, and therefore also that mantra for the curse will be different. So all of the hints, all of the advices, what you should do in life, where you should go, this physical, helpful, valuable things, which are just tips, and also this metaphysical, helpful things, which are the mantras, uh, they will be not so effective as if we have the properly rectified chart. Okay, guys, so that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching till the end and being here with me on this channel. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps this channel and uh, join our Discord community. We have more than 100 people. If you would like me to help you read your chart with the Rashi, Navamsha, Dashamsa, with the yogas, what yogas you have in the chart, in which dasha you are really and what this dasha is doing with your life, uh, what is in your Navamsha, what is in the Dashamsa, and giving you the remedies, positive, negative, and those yoga-based, then hit me up and we can schedule a consultation for you 60 or 90 minutes on the zoom if you like to learn more about navamsha rectification please consider watching this one